In this video, I want to introduce you to the Australian Parliament. What is it? What is it composed of? And what are its functions? Hello everyone, my name is Renato Costa, this is Aussie Law, and today we are talking about the Australian Parliament. If you watched our video about the separation of powers, you already know that Australia is a parliamentary monarchy. That means that we have a system where parliament is the highest political organ in the land. This is different than from having a presidential system where the executive, the president, will be the one wielding most of the political power. Now, in Australia, the repository of the political powers is the parliament. And that is evident in the fact that the executive in Australia is formed from within parliament. The members of the highest levels of the executive are ministers. That is, they must be elected members of parliament. And this is expressed in section 64 of the Australian Constitution. Okay, do you think that I'm going too fast? Let's, let's take a moment here then and let's do this together. I'll divide this video into two big chunks. The first one we will talk about the powers of parliament and the second one about the elements, the composition of parliament. So let's start with the powers. What is parliament supposed to do? Overall, the Australian parliament will exercise the legislative powers of the Commonwealth. That means that the primary function of the Australian parliament is as a legislature, the body responsible to legislate, to legislate. In parliament, there will be a proposition of the laws, the laws will be debated, and then eventually, if approved, the parliament will enact laws. And that's why we have section 51 in the Australian constitution, because section 51 consists of a list of the heads of power, the subject matters according to which the Commonwealth parliament can legislate about. It's true that there are some other heads of power or subject matters that the Commonwealth Parliament can legislate about in other provisions of the Constitution, but the majority, the bulk of it, is in Section 51. But the Commonwealth Parliament also has some other functions as well. For example, it is in the lower house of the Commonwealth Parliament that the executive will be formed. So it is up for Parliament to scrutinize the executive and hold it accountable. Indeed, Parliament is the place not only to discuss legislation and enact new laws, but also the place to hold the government accountable and even hold inquiries on the government. Now that you know what are the functions of Parliament, let's go to the composition. What's the Australian Parliament composed of? Well, if we read section 1 of the Australian Constitution, we'll see that the Commonwealth Parliament is composed of the Queen, a Senate and a House of Representatives. That means that, at least formally, we have a parliament that has the monarch as its leader. But that is only formally though, because according to the conventions of representative and responsible government, it is the elected members of parliament that will be conducting the affairs in parliament. I have a playlist in this channel that will help you understand a bit more about the principles of responsible government, representative government, about who the prime minister is, and even about the existence of these formal provisions in the constitution and also the constitutional conventions. You should take the time to watch that playlist and the videos that are there, but also why don't you like this video, subscribe to our channel because that's the best way you can guarantee that you're not going to miss any of our videos. And also you should consider becoming a member of Aussie Law. And also I should thank the first person who ever became a member of Aussie Law, that was Jason Goldie. Thanks mate for doing that. I really appreciate you taking the time and the effort to be part of our community and also to um, keep on encouraging me to keep on doing these videos. So it's much appreciated, thank you. Well, we have three elements composed in Parliament then. We have the Queen, the Senate and the House of Representatives. But the Queen doesn't quite participate in the Australian Parliament and so according to section 2 of the Australian Constitution, the Governor-General will be exercising the powers of the Queen in Parliament. And the two big moments where we'll see the Governor-General as the Queen's representative participating in Parliament is in the summoning, proroguing or dissolving Parliament in its sessions and in giving ratification for the approved laws. That is called royal assent. I will make another video about the parliamentary process, so don't worry about understanding what royal assent really is right now. We'll talk about it later. So just again make sure that you are subscribed to our channel so you don't miss that video. 
We have then two houses of parliament, the Senate and the House of Representatives. And that is why we say that the Australian Parliament is bicameral. It has two chambers, two houses. In fact, it's not only the Commonwealth. Five of the Australian six states have bicameral system. Queensland is the only unicameral state in Australia and it abolished the upper house in 1922. So we have Queensland and the two mainland territories as unicameral. All the other states, five of the states, they are bicameral, like the Commonwealth. The Senate is called the State's House. It's usually referred to as the Upper House. According to Section 7 of the Australian Constitution, the Senate shall be composed of senators for each state, directly chosen by the people of the state, voting until the Parliament otherwise provides as one electorate. That means that the senators are representing the whole state, rather than just their district, as it happens with the House of Representatives. And that's why, again, the Senate is called the House of the States. The number of senators will be equal to all states. So it doesn't matter the geographical size or the number of the population of each state, each original state will have the same number of senators. That means that they are equally represented. And in the Constitution, that representation was of at least six senators. Today, however, we have a total of 12 senators per state. That means that we have 76 senators. Wait, I just instantly did the math here, and you are not right, Renato, because we can't have 76 senators if we have six states with 12 senators each. That's 72, so there are four missing. Where are they coming from? We'll soon have videos about the cases that allowed for territorial representation. The ACT and the Northern Territory both have two representatives in the Senate. That's where the four representatives are coming from. In total, the Senate has 76 seats today. Just sit tight and the videos are coming up about that as well. Senators are elected every three years for a six-year term. That means that every three years we'll have elections for half the Senate. Now, let's go to the House of Representatives. It's also called the Lower House, but that's the place where most of the members of Parliament are. According to Section 24 of the Australian Constitution, the House of Representatives shall be composed of members directly chosen by the people of the Commonwealth, and the number of such members shall be as nearly as practicable twice the number of the Senators. Today, we have 151 members sitting in the lower house of parliament. That's almost exactly twice the number of the senators. And section 24 of the Australian constitution says further that the members of the House of Representatives are elected proportionally on a population basis. They are elected for a three-year term unless Parliament is dissolved before that. And the provision also says that the minimum representation of an original state will be of five members of Parliament. Tasmania is the only original state that still maintains only five MPs. Look, in no respects, both Houses of Parliament will have the same status. That means that since they are the legislature, the Senate and the House of Representatives are equal. Each one of the House can initiate a law, they'll be debated among them, and both of them can enact them. The Australian Constitution only has one exception to that equality between the Houses. According to Section 53 of the Australian Constitution, taxation laws and laws appropriating money from the Consolidated Revenue Fund must originate in the lower house. Other than these money bills, it doesn't matter where the legislation is coming from, the Senate and the House of Representatives will be equal and the law can originate in other house. Well, this was an introduction to the Australian Parliament. I hope you learned something new and I hope you're considering subscribing to our channel or even becoming a member. Because that's the way that I know that I'll see you again. Until then, ciao.